So, could you, would you mind telling us a little bit about your family first of all? Okay. Um, my father was Johnny Walker, and uh, he worked in George Waits for years. I think it was about 30 something years. And he became redundant and he opened a chip. Um, my mum's people uh, came from Castle Street, and um, we, there was 13 of us in it. Um, eight oh, girls. What was her surname? Her surname was Goodchild. Um, thirteen children, my mother had. I was uh, the fourth eldest. Um, eight boys, eight girls. Sorry, and five boys. There's two of them deceased now. Two of my brothers, John. He was the eldest, and the younger brother, Danny. Um, I suppose times were hard then. But, um, so we lived in Dominic's place first and then we moved to Cahill Brew Street. So I think we were the first in there at the time, new house. And uh, that's where my parents lived. And then you went to the Mercy, is it? Went to the Mercy, yeah. And did you do your, did you go on to secondary school? No, I did not. Um, I, at that time, you were lucky because um, you had to go and work. And I was the fourth eldest. So um, I went on to work, worked in shops, uh, worked in a little shop. Um, I worked in Lipton's. And from Lipton's, I worked in Dunlop's. Uh, we made slippers. Uh, nice job. Um, when my father opened the chipper in Patrick Street, I worked for him for years. And so was that like uh, after work you worked there or like were you working in one place during the day? No, you? well, um, Dunlop's um, closed down. So I worked for my father. I left there. I took the redundancy. So a few bones. I left there about 12 months before it actually closed down. And I worked for my father in the chipper in Patrick Street. Um, hard work. So I, I liked it. I loved meeting the people. And uh, yeah, it was, you know, it was a job. Mm. And um, at home all day. Um, my mother worked very hard. My father worked hard. We all did. My brothers worked in the glass. And then how did you hear about it? Was there somebody already in the glass before you heard about it? Oh yeah, my uh, two brothers worked in the glass. My sister worked in the glass. And my aunt worked in the glass. And... Um, Don Walker would have been a cousin of ours. So, we, yeah, there were a few. It was a great job, <laughs> as they say, um, and it was. Okay, and what, can you remember your... For, first of all, how, how did you get in there? Was that your aunt or was it... No, actually, it wasn't. Um, my mother um, was after... She was talking to somebody and I didn't have a job. But Sean Dunphy was very nice to me and um, he offered me a job uh, on the cash till in the, they were opening a new canteen um, but the jobs were gone and that was it. Um, he promised me a job then in the factory um, and I, I went out and he said he had a vacancy in the blown room so I can remember that as well the, the day I went out um, I can remember I had a big pair of high shoes, a dress on me and a pair of sunglasses. And then um, Sean Dunphy said to me, um, 
the foreman came down to bring me around up in the blown room and uh, I'll never forget the banging of shields, screaming and shouting. i never forget it. I was mortified and because I knew a lot of the blowers. So he offered me the job and there were two nice girls there, Noreen, Noreen Welch and Anne Furt. I would have been working with them on the layer. And um, he said to me, the job is there if you want it. So I was delighted and I took the job. And before that, I was very nearly not going in there because when I went down to the north, you had to go for your uh, medical. And um, she was busy and she handed out a bottle and she says to me, bring that home and bring it back. And I said, what's that for? And all the fellas start shouting at me, telling me what it was for. I was mortified. But anyway, I started on the Monday morning. Tom Power was a gentleman, lovely, lovely foreman. And uh, yeah, there were lovely girls there. We became very friendly. And I must say, the men, it was the happiest place I worked uh, when I went in there was K4. I worked in K4 for years and there was a change in the job. Um, people were getting moved out of it, you know, depending on uh, what seniority you had. But then I worked in K1, and I liked K1. I worked in K2, um, I liked K2 as well. And um, then we had to move again. So I um, went down to the packing K2, I had worked with Sean O'Keefe. Sean was very good to me. I uh, was got the overtime and um, I was there. And after a while, I just didn't think it was the place for me. So um, we were there. I came back up. When you moved down to the uh, packing, you would get £2,000. Uh, 2, but it wasn't the money for me. Um, I liked my job, but I kind of felt you had to be happy in your job. So I came back up anyway, and that's how I, I worked in K2 and K1, and I loved it. But then we were on the move again, and Dick Frisbee would have been one of my uh, bosses in K1 later. Um, what was your man's name? There was two or four men, they, they were gone. So he said about working in the finishing. So I went in to work in the finishing. Kathleen Bork, I worked with Kathleen, she was nice. Um, Mary Gleason, uh, Valerie Rowe, um, Mary O'Shea, and Vina. Um, it was okay, you know. So that changed then when they were talking about um, all this tank furnace. So I went to work on the tank furnace and um, it was shift work. I didn't mind it at times, um, but I found it a bit difficult insofar as that I had um, lodgers here and it was a bit awkward for me. Um, it was hard going. But anyway, uh, I must say I worked with all, I was the only girl then on the, working on, on the, um, and it would have been on the machine, Speed 24, on my shift um, in, in where I worked on the on the machine, up on the tank. Uh, we had very good nights out. I went with all, with all the men and nights out. Great crowd of lads. And they were very good to me. I didn't have a car at the time. And some of them gave me lift something down to work. Um, what's his name? Um, not terrible. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it. It was... I, I, can, I can just ask you a question again, to go right back. Do you remember that first day when you came in to yeah. so look at the... Uh, the job. Yeah, and you went in... It was very high, warm. And you had high heels and everything. Oh, I did, yeah. What, what did you see? I mean, did, did, did you get scared by the place or did you...? I know, no. It, it was... Um, I can remember it was in August and it was warm that time. But the heat in there was very intense. And uh, and what I liked about it was because I was probably a bit shy, I suppose. People wouldn't agree with that, but I was. And where I would have been working then, there was only three girls 
working uh, on the turntable. The glass would come down on the turntable. Like, they were like buckets. And you put them into the layer. So you'd have um, 12 on one side for one hour. And then you had to work on the other side. There were six glass. And um, you had a half an hour off. You rotate it. You rotate it all day long. Uh, three of us working on two turntables. Oh, yeah. Did you get to have a chat while you were doing it? Or? Well, you could. At that time, you could smoke. And uh, and we got on. They were lovely girls to work with. They were. And we'd have nights out and we had a great time. And they were a great bunch. Yeah. And what, what was the... the uh, like, the women... The women were working there, but, I mean, it was mainly men, wasn't it? Mainly men, yeah. The women worked hard, too. A lot of them worked on the heavies, which would have been a very difficult job, you know. Uh, but um, it was a great... Of all that, now, I worked all over the glass factory, but I have to say there was a great um, time there, great laugh, and um, I thought they were fantastic, the blowers. We had great nights out, and... Uh, we had dinner dances and they were just, they were fantastic. Everybody looked after everybody, you know. Uh, the men were, were, I liked working with men. I found them very easy to work with. They were very helpful. In any place I worked with, men worked. Uh, I did find them very helpful, yeah. And what years were you there? I went in in 81 and I left um 2007 I had been in hospital uh, and I was out of work with my hands as well so like it closed then 2009 so I would have been there only that I was in and out okay. you know and you know the whole thing about like way way back now women used to have to leave when they got married and all that that's right yeah I well mean, that was before my time okay yeah but that, that changed before it did came. change okay. yeah and I was just lucky because when I went in, they were starting to take on women on, um, you know, you you went in on, what do you call it? Um, my job was a permanent job. Uh, when the women after that, uh, they, they would be taken on for 21 weeks. Okay. And um, contract. contract workers then started to come in. So it was kind of contract then the whole time like from that I suppose I was a lucky one but I had lovely bosses I must say most of them, I, I couldn't say anything but any of the foremen that and I was over they were a lot more for me I found them very nice to work with and like who were the characters that you remember from when you when you first went in like the characters well we, I worked with a girl we used to call her Annie Lolly she was a character Um, there was a lot of fellas there that you'd, you'd, you'd have a great laugh but um, I went down to the factory and I was working with Sheeps. Sheeps Roach, Lord Morrison, he's dead now. He was a great laugh. And there were lots of fellas there, you know, and um, there was always a great laugh. And I remember, um, uh, what was his name? He, had, Oh, gosh, he was up in the blown room. Um, he used to take off Elvis. Um, he was Foxy Hair Champ now. I can't think of his name, Jesus. Um, they were great. They were great characters, you know. Um, I met so many of them, and the thing I found about them, I don't think they'll ever be another factory in Waterford, because they couldn't be. Everybody went in there at a young age. Most of the men went in, and a lot of the women, and it was just everybody was on the same level. There were no, you know, anyone, nobody any better. But I think that they, there was something there, and especially in Waterford. Everybody know everybody else. And where I came from, there was a lot of people around our area. Like, you could have three and four in a family working there, you know. And uh, that's the way it was. Like, you know, everybody knew everybody else. And um, and they were very, very helpful. I had great days. Sad to see it going. I got a good living out of it. Um, and I was delighted to get the job at the time because I didn't have a job and I wanted to work and, you know, so it was very good to me. Mm. I worked a lot of overtime. I went down the factory and i done a lot of overtime in, in any of the packing rooms, worked two nights a week, maybe three, maybe four. 
And the money was good? The money was good at the time because I had to work the rounds of the clock because I had a, a mortgage on this house, which, you know, at the time, I suppose, in the 80s, it was kind of, um, it was hard, you know, it was very hard. But um, looking back, I often think of some of the people, you know, and a lot of them are gone, sadly. But I worked with um, Teresa Kennedy. Teresa was a character and we had great laughs and we would have been working together in uh, the packing. And um, we'd, uh, I was after getting a car and uh, we'd go off spinning, as we'd say, in the night time after work. And um, I should they were great. They were great characters there. Absolutely great. The laughs we had with all the fellas and Kilkenny fellas, we used to give them a hard time. You know, they were always winning and we used to give an awful time. And um, oh, sure, it was great. Um, the cutters had come down and work with us, you know. They'd be working on the line. But uh, the jokes they'd be telling you, and, um, you know, Christmas was a great time. It was marvellous. But... Um, it was, it was great. There was so much, you know, the nights out and uh, we used to have nights out quite a lot. Uh, when I worked in the blown room, we'd go out on Friday night. Oh, Teresa Westwood, she was something else. She was something else. And then you had Vera. She was another character, Vera. And um, yeah, Teresa was was great. Uh, she was, oh, she, was, she had some laugh. She met um she met her husband actually there, and I was at their wedding, uh, Tommy O'Rourke, but um they were great you know they were absolutely great people, uh, what else? Uh, Just <coughs> do you know me, um, for women I suppose as well like like, it would be better paid than we say in other factories and more for us. Oh yeah, the conditions were great. We, we got money, really. We got a lot of money bonuses and, um, you know, often a disturbance money and, you know, all that. Um, it was great. The money was great. I mean, it was like, um, it was a, a job for life and anybody got in there, that's what they were told. It's a job for life, so you mind it and let it be brother or sister or whatever, you know. But... Um, and would you ever... Get any resentment from other people in Waterford about that? In the sense that because you had it so good? Well, not really, because I think the workers were great. Um, I think they were marvellous. I mean, a lot of, between the hospital and anybody ever needed money in the time uh, of the strike, um, the coal mines in, in England, uh, they were, had been very good to us. So, like, we done it for them. But um, for the hospitals and all the places they they everybody gave money out of their wages for band-aid and you know all that kind of thing so it was very very um it was very good like um you know they were they were known to be like that but um yeah you know and um we had half days if there was any event on we you know we were all going to it and anybody all the celebrities that come into the factory and you know, at that time, when I was working in K4, we'd meet a lot of them. But um, for me, uh, I'll never forget the day, Joe Dolan. I love Joe Dolan. And I'm going to Joe Dolan since I was about 18, all his shows and concerts. I loved him. But he came in one day and um, we were all looking for the tie, like we always look for the tie when he was playing. And um, I can remember the fellas. I, he swung me around and we were all screaming and shouting and the glasses were going around and the fellas were shouting over, don't mind effing Joe Dolan. Our wage, we'll have no wages next week. But uh, it was a great, a great atmosphere when anybody had come in. And um, should that night we tore him off the stage up in, up in the Ardry. He played for them, the blowers for their, I think it's 25 years and then they had him, I think, the second year. I think it was 25 years, yeah. But uh, oh, it, was, it was a great, it was a great place to work. And I think a lot of the, obviously, a lot of the hotels and the pubs and all that, they they did well out of the glass. Oh, they did. 
You know I mean? Like even holidays, people going to Spain, all travel agency and Waterford, all the shops uh, don't greet business. And um, and we yourself, my father always said it, you know, about them. And we had a lot of customers worked in, in the glass. A lot of customers came in when they worked in the glass. And uh, you'd be getting ready, like, when it would be the Friday, the holidays, because everybody went out. Well, a lot of people went out. And, um, you know, there was always music put on in the pops and uh, great nights. They spent a lot of money. They really and truly spent a lot of money. It was the place, really, you know, the glass factory. I know there was a lot of other jobs, but I don't think they had the money that what we had. Mm-hmm. They, were great. We, they worked hard, like a lot of the... You know, people did work hard, cutters, blowers and women and that, you know, they did. And the women, do you think that the women were given a fair opportunity out there or do you think like it was mainly the men's? But I think that kind of changed because, um, you know, maybe at one time it was men, but, um, you know, they, they did. And, and I think for families too, for their children, for an education, there was great opportunities, you know, for them to go to college. Um, you know, I was quite happy. Yeah, they, you, you know, you, you did get a chance, mm. you know, and people went back to college. And when all that thing changed, they did, yeah. And did you get involved in the union at all? Right no, I didn't really, oh, yeah. no. Um, I was quite happy with what I had. But there were a lot of very well-educated people and loved to see them getting on. There were lots of friends of mine. I was delighted to see them, you know, getting better in themselves that they deserved and um, and done the job good. And if them, you know, and did I you, got them. Like, were you there during the strike? I was. And I what, was. What I was never, that like? Well, I'll never forget the day because the day before that, I was after going down to buy a fireplace, not that one. And um, the fireplace was 900 and... 30 I think and I was after booking the fireplace and the next day the strike came off and I was sick but anyway I got the fireplace paid for it after um, I was very sad to see it happening very sad but um, it happened and it was for a lot of people I suppose um, I wasn't too badly off um, I didn't have a family and um, my husband had been working uh, for people that didn't have, you know, with the breadwinners, with a lot of fathers had children, and they were the people I felt very sorry for, yeah. And people that you worked alongside of, because the glass factory workers were the best for everything. And I got a lot of things, uh, anytime I was collecting anything, looking for anything, I got toys, clothes, prams, anything from the glass factory workers. My brother um, was um, looking for things. He was he was after, he was building a school in the Gambia. Um, and uh, I got a lot of things off the workers there. They brought me in, in the blown. Pencils, copies, um, all the, you know, clothing, toys, Anything they gave me, I passed them on. And uh, they were great, absolutely great. Um, I always say that about the workers, and I always say they'll never be, they'll never be a group of men and women like what they were there. And I think we all knew what it was like to have nothing. And any of them that worked there and done well, really appreciate it, but they worked for it. But it was lovely to see people better themselves, you know. And like, would you, um, <clears throat> I mean, obviously looking back on it, you can see, you, you left a couple of years before it closed. Yeah. But, but I mean, could you see the writing on the wall at that stage? Well, things were kind of going downhill. Like, I don't know, there was, um, I used, we used to go in early in the morning on a Friday morning, I worked in, in the packing. And uh, yeah, they wouldn't have things, um, they'd be short of things, boxes. And you, there was, I don't know, you'd see that feeling, you know, things have changed and it was kind of going downhill. You'd see it kind of going downhill, you know, and it was, it was really, yeah, the atmosphere. And I suppose like, you know, um, 
people were unsure of their future and what was we was it going to turn out. I mean, the strike was really, really frightening. I don't think anybody expected it to go on as long as it did. But it went on for a long time. And um, when we went back, things changed. And then when it closed, yeah, it was very sad. And did you go down after it closed? Did you go down for the sit-in? No? I did, yeah. yeah. I did. And was that very emotional? Stuff? Very emotional, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I was there. Yeah, you had to support your workers, you know. They were very good to me, as I said, and uh, they were loyal workers. And many's the night, um, I didn't have the money for a taxi, maybe. And um, and Scobie used to bring me home and, you know, bring me to work. And the men that gave me a lift did not come to the door and bring me up and down to work uh, because you couldn't keep it going for taxis you know, everywhere you go. They were very, very good to me. I was sorry for all, I felt so sorry for young men, uh, well, people with a mortgage, because um, it was very difficult, you know, and their children, the cars. Um, it was, it was frightening for an awful lot of them, yeah. Mm. It was a terrible time. The atmosphere wasn't, it was, you know, kind of bad, you know. But uh, it was very, very sad to see it going. And did you manage to get... You know, the way a lot of the workers had to fight for their pension afterwards. Did that affect you as well? Or? I would have been part of it, you know, yeah. And I was delighted to get my money, to be honest with you. Um, so I would have been... Years. Was it 10 years it took to get? Uh, it did, yeah, yeah. Um, it took a long time, but, uh, you know, well, when you worked that length of time, we were, we paid into everything and uh, it was their money and they were entitled to it, you know. No, but everybody wants their money after work, and yeah, it was it was sad, sad the way it went. I mean, it, you know the union were there, and there was union meetings and everything. You know that was going on. I suppose we were lucky to get it. It was ours, but um, yeah, and you know it kind of it's sad today to think that the glass factory, as when we know, is gone. All the workers are gone. And it was like a bombshell, I thought, in Waterford. Because, you know, the shops and all were affected. Um, every place, it hit everyone, you know, because uh, there's suddenly there was no money there. And um, and the hard thing, I suppose, for a lot of people, then some were young enough to get jobs. But then if you were at a certain age, well, you hadn't a hope of getting a job. You know, you were too old. And uh, that's the thing about it, yeah. you know. And, and then how do you feel about the, the present Waterford Crystal? I mean, do you feel like that's not to do with the old company? Or were well, it's it? not really, but mm -hmm. I suppose, look, if it's... Um, I went in there. I went in there, I was with an active retirement. I'm in an active retirement. I went in there because I knew some of the lads there that I had worked with in Waterford Crystal. Look, if it's good for Waterford, you know, and someone has a job, you know, and that's the way it is, isn't it? You know, because um, there was an awful lot of, I suppose, anger about things, you know, and bitterness and the way people, you know, at the end, the way they got treated. But hasn't, I suppose, things have moved on and mm. t uh, times have changed and, you know, what's the point? You know, but um, I don't know. Tis, tis. Um, I'm sure it's sad. A lot of people are gone now, and there was a lot of young people. Do you know that we worked with, and every day you hear some, and it's very sad. And there were ver people very conscientious there. You know, people worked at it and gave their all. I never thought probably it was going to go like that. But I had happy times there. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Um, you know, one area that more than another, you probably like it more. But um, they were a good crowd of people and, and they were very good. They were. And you said you started off with the blowing. Was, yeah. They used to be famous for sing songs, though. Oh, they were great. Music, sing song, everything. Um, yeah, great sing song. 
and anyone come in and the tours used to have a great laugh and uh, some of the special tours famous people would be brought over to where we were working and uh, yeah we'd have a chat with them and start about half eight or in the morning but um yeah um Anne Welch and Eileen Olin and Pauline Ivory and Pauline but um I can't even remember half of them. Oh, yeah. uh, but they were they were all great. Joe Cretson would have been the manager there at the heavies. But Tom Power was my boss and he was a lovely man. He was a great boss. I liked Tom. And at that stage Joe was a manager, he wasn't a, he wasn't a blower at that stage. Oh he was a the manager then, oh, yeah. Had yeah. you ever seen him blowing? No, actually I'd, maybe he'd um you know, if they had a new mole in or if, you know, he was fixing something, well then yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was it was warm. I loved the K four blowing room. But then as I said, I worked over it. Um I worked over in K two and I worked in K one. And um we had Bill Sex there and, and Ken Healy. They kinda of came in at that time. See, mm. things kinda of changed, didn't they? Colin O'Connor was a, a character. He used to come up to the blowing room. You'd always have a good laugh with him, you know. He was uh and I think he got on with all the blowers. But, and, um, isn't it funny that a lot of water people never went in there? Yeah, well, it is, yeah. But a lot of people didn't go into Reginald's Tower either, do you know? And uh, <laughs> I, I went in there with a um, friend of mine. She was home from America years ago. And that's how we saw it. Because um, I suppose we don't really appreciate things, do we? You know what's on her doorstep? Yeah, yeah. but um, I went in there a few times. I I went to dinner dances before I actually worked there. I went to a couple of dinner dances with few fellas, you know, and uh, I was amazed actually. I was amazed at the way they were working and the noise, the heat in the blowing room, the noise down the cotton, and you know all around it. But um, yeah, it was. It was great, but Christmas was a lovely time with all the singing and have a Christmas tree up and, you know, getting cards and presents and passing them to one another. Yeah, it was a great, it was a great atmosphere. It really was. You I know. believe people used to do h- hymns and everything, wasn't it? Like oh, so. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd bring, I used to have my, um, I used to bring in CDs and uh, uh, there was one chap there and, Oh, he is, we used to have a laugh now, Teresa, Kendi, myself and a few of them. But uh, Tom Brophy was a character. He would have worked with us. He was a cutter. Then I think he was in the office. But uh, we had we had a great laugh. We had a great laugh at all the, all the Kilkenny fellas. We used to give them an awful time. But uh, yeah, it was great. Um, and the Blower's Dinner Dance was one of the best. So it was always known to be one of the best. But um, you know all the spot praises and everything. You know it was it was great. It was a great. It was kind of a family sort of a place. Do you know? As I said, everybody looked out for everybody else, and they were great. They were marvelous. They were marvelous uh, crowd of people. And I suppose every, as you said, everybody went in there quite young. They did, um, yeah, and do you know it was a big thing the day of the holidays. And everybody, you know, going to Spain and going every place else. People had the money and the nights out. As I said, it really changed Waterford, the glass factory. Now, there would have been people there longer than, than me, you know, um, would have remembered working in Johnstown and that. But um, from what I remember of it, uh, yeah, I was glad I went into work there. I was a bit older going in there. But for the years I was there, yeah, yeah, I did. I it was great. Mm. It was great. And um and I worked I worked all over and I worked down with um another girl, Peggy. Um Peggy that terrible I getting Peggy was from um Pondy Place there. She was she was a great little worker and she was very helpful. She, we worked together then on the on the lines, you know, um Susan and um, I'm trying to think of them all now. I didn't know. I can hear. Would you would would you found like dealing with especially with the blowing session? Was it dangerous working with the glass, like hot glass and all that? Kind of well, stuff? you you get you might get a burn. 
you know, um, well, I'd say, you know, it was, we weren't too bad, I must say, on earth. Well, a glass might explode on the ground. But I'd say for the heavier, heavy big pieces, yeah. But then we weren't in the finishing and you could cut your finger. The, the machine was P24 and that thing was going around. And I worked with Kathleen and Kathleen was great at her job, Kathleen Burke. And Kathleen was so exact and Mary, Peggy, they were so, they, I must say, and I worked, you know, in a lot of places, but they were so conscientious. I never see anything like it, you know, you worked up to the nearly five to four and, but they made sure everything was just right. And sometimes I often thought, you know, does people like that get credit for what they do? I know we all worked and done our job, but some people just love their job or take it so serious, you know. But, um, yeah, they were, you know, and um, we'd go over to the canteen and you'd have to, you know, be back on time. But, um, yeah, we our tea break, when I went into the blown room, um, we used to have our tea break maybe up in the blown room. And... Um, then we'd go to the canteen for our lunch. But um, at that time, it was the old canteen and you'd get a um, mug of soup. And uh, it was great, you know, in the winter. But you never, you were never cold. It was very warm in the summer, but it was lovely in the winter because it was so warm there. And we were lucky we were near a window. Um, yeah, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And do you ever hear about, you know, people accidentally getting burned so they could get off work, you know. Well, you, you tear it, wouldn't you? <laughs> if they'd went um, to go to or something or... Well, there were so many stories, you know, I don't know. Um, I didn't, well, as I said, my fingers were kind of cut, um, you know, from whatever I was using there, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but I think they were kind of okay. I got time off one time. Um, uh, Peter Delahunt is to call him Delby. Um, my brother, my brother's sister-in-law won the lotto, and she gave me a present of a holiday on a cruise ship. So I had to get some time off, and um, they gave me um a seahorse, um to present to the captain because it was the second voyage. It was a P&O you know, um, ship. And um, the name of Christ the pool was called the Crystal Pool. So I had to go and uh, present him with this. And then they took photographs and I had to bring him back because of that, uh, the photographs. Because at that time, we used to have the magazine, Class Factory magazine. and. It was lovely because there were so many different events and, you know, it was great publicity for the glass factory at the time. And he was lovely. I must say the captain was lovely and had a lovely time. And um, I worked in a lot of time for it, but, you know, I got the time off. And uh, it was lovely. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think they were kind of, you know, I think they were okay now like that so to, the, to the work. Right? Yeah, I was like, well, they were, yeah. You know, even though, like, I mean, I know we got three weeks holidays in the summer and a week of Christmas, which was great, you know, it was marvellous. But, um, yeah, they were, I, I found them okay. But then I was, you know, eight, um, eight to half three when I was in the blown room, which was great. And then when we went down the factory, it was eight to half four. And um, we'd work then for an overtime up to seven, work Saturday morning, a few nights. So, um, you know, it was great. And um, as I said, worked in K4 um, for Billy Brennan and I worked in K2, mostly K2 for Sean O'Keefe. And he treated me very well. Mm. And the girls were okay, Do you know. We'd go down and wipe the glass and then we'd wrap it and pack it or whatever. And uh, yeah, I worked for um, a lot of four men. Um, Michael Power was in K2 in the blowing. Dick was in K1. Um, 
I had Joe Casey, and uh, Tom Power. I'm even running out of names. Brian Power was lovely. I worked with Brian down the packing. He was a lovely boss, and he was lovely to everyone. He was, you know, he was known to be nice, and he was lovely. And Tom Welch, Tom would have been working at the time. I think he's now down in Waterford Crystal. But they were, they were all lovely. They were doing their job, like, mm-hmm. you know. Very few, I know, that you'd say wasn't the best. I don't know. Look, you get, everyone is, is different. But I was just lucky, uh, you know, they were nice to me. And it's nice, like, you know, to feel comfortable. And, um, you know, someone is nice to you, well, and you're doing your job, sure, you can't. What else can they say? Yeah. Well, Helen, it's great to actually talk to, uh, to, you know, we found it very hard to get the women to talk to us for this film. So it's great that you... Did you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope it don't bore anyone now. No, 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 it's great. Uh, it's great because it's like, you know, often we, people don't think of women in the glass factory. They think of the blowers or the cutters or... Yeah. You know, they think of the craftsmen. But yeah, really and probably I should have thought of, um, you know, I would have thought of uh, the other girls that I worked with, but there were so many and, like, I wasn't expecting this. Oh, no, no, you hey, know, that's fantastic. so... That's fantastic. Um, yeah, it was, it was a great place. Pity, like, isn't it, the way... Well, I suppose these things have a cycle, don't they? they yeah. They, Maybe we just thought it was going to be there forever. I know, yeah, that's it. You know, and I suppose things have changed, haven't they? And, you know, things it's, have changed. It's definitely sad, like, that's all gone. Well, the only, we all met and got to know people. I mean, I would pass people probably every day and just look at them, mid say hello. But um, you got to know people there, um, you know, as people. And maybe people that you might have gone to school with or that they were over the other end of the road, but you didn't know them that well to talk to. But I kind of felt that when, and you know, you'd meet up with different things um, that you would get to know people, you know. Yeah. That's the thing I found about them. And, you know, they they share things. I mean, we always share things. And uh, that's what I found about a lot of the women. Um, no matter what it was, you know, if, if they had something that you wanted or needed, they would, yeah, they, they'd share with you. You know, oh, it was wonderful. It was, it was really, for me anyway, it, it changed my life because um, when I went to work forest, I found it a bit harder because I was older. Um, I, I did find it old. I started in 31st of August and... Um, I kind of, you know, I was after coming back from Lourdes and I had the job. And when I got the job, then I thought, well, this, you don't, you appreciate something then when you're after getting it. Mm. You know, whereas um, if you get something handed to you, well, you know, it is different. And did you ever get involved in Topsy Town? Really? Never. Teresa was in that. Well, I used to go to the shows. I thought the shows were great. Uh, marvellous. And they put so much into it. You know, and the beautiful costumes, everything about There's a lot it. of talent there in the class. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, they were great talent. And, you know, sometimes people didn't get the chance um, and could have, you know, a lot of them were great singers and great actors and, um, oh, they were, it was marvellous. You know, I suppose, like, um, people, you know, now you're more mature and you see things more. Um, in those times, people just didn't uh, weren't recognised, and that was the thing about it, you know. But um, well, everyone has some kind of talent, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. You know, everybody have Absolutely. some kind of gift. Yeah. But uh, the shows were great. Oh, they were marvellous. I used to go to the mall. Yeah, absolutely, big crowd. Yeah, it's just sad to see them, and often, you know, in in. In the Holy Ghost, or I was used to be talking to Nancy Dry there, and uh, she started talking about the tops of the town. And um, she said, You know, there were great dancers, and you know, the great comedy, and you know, the marvelous, it was great, absolutely great. You'd always like, you know, you'd be proud of working in the water for Crystal, yeah. Oh, well, we get that a lot from workers, yeah, that there was a great sense of pride. Oh, they were, yeah, they were. But, um, 
you know, if people had got that chance, you know, maybe earlier, you'd never know what they might have been mm. later, you know. But we kind of, I think that they're just happy to go along and, you know, maybe in their spare time, um, you know, the shows were something else for them and great singers, great musicians. Great. Absolutely great, you know. But, um, yeah, there'll never be another place like it. You know, I, I just think um, it was a great place to work. I'm so lucky and so happy to have worked there because um, great days. Yeah. It was tough getting up some mornings going and, you know, but, <laughs> you know, if you're after being out the night before, but, um, you know, you got up and, and you went to work and and that was it. Like there was something on every every weekend. There was some place to go and, do you know, it was great. Mm. Helen, thanks very much. Okay. Thank you. Not at all. Thank you so much for giving us oh, that time. And I'll probably get, when, well, if, if this was played back now, I'd be more no, That's always the same, Helen. That's always the same. Would you like a cup of tea? No, we need to.